Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the third required practical for AQA A-level biology, and that is the determination of the water potential of plant tissue. So the water potential um, of a plant is basically the water potential of the cytoplasm of the cells within the plant. And this water potential will change due to ions and solutes and so on that are inside the cytoplasm, that are dissolved in the cytoplasm. Because of that, water will either move in or out of the cells by osmosis. So water moves, uh, so osmosis is the movement of water from an area of higher water potential to an area of lower water potential down the water potential gradient. When asked to explain what osmosis is, you have to say the words higher and lower, not high or low, because it has to be relative, yeah? It has to be compared, so higher to lower. Um, so obviously, if the cytoplasm is full of lots and lots of ions, lots of H+, lots of sodium and chloride, all these ions, the water potential of the cytoplasm of the cell will be very low. Therefore, water from the soil will move in to the cell's by osmosis. So the practical um, for this sort of what was required was to determine the water potential of a cell in a certain concentration. And the way this needs to be worked out is as follows. So first of all, a graph of concentration on the x-axis and percentage change in mass or the ratio of change needs to be plotted on the y-axis. And then from that graph, the concentration where the curve crosses the x-axis slash intercepts needs to be um, found. So um, if I draw sort of the graph, okay, this is what the experiment was. The result would have been this really badly drawn graph here, okay? So this would have been plus, this would have been minus, and this would have been zero, okay? So this is the change in mass. So generally, it's sort of like, you know, it's really easy, practical, you put, you know, it could be like potato, uh, you know, cylinders inside different sucrose solution. Um, and then you measure whether the mass increases or decreases compared to what it was initially. And then you plot a graph. Um, so you'd have concentration sort of sucrose or whatever the solution was on that, on um, the axis here. And then the graph that you produce will look like this. Okay. So the values here have increased in mass, and that suggests that water has moved into the potato tubes, into the cytoplasm of the cells by osmosis, because there is a lower potential water potential inside compared to outside. And um, on this side, it's lost mass because there is a higher water potential inside than outside. Therefore, the water has moved out into sort of the surrounding test tube, okay? And that makes sense. As the concentration increases, obviously, the more and more water will be lost, um, the mass will decrease because the outside concentration of sucrose solution will be more concentrated, will have a lower water potential than the inside um, of the cytoplasm of the cell. So the graph would be plotted. And then it says to find the concentration where the curve crosses the x-axis, okay? So where it intercepts, okay? And that would be this point here, okay? So you determine whatever value that is. And just for argument's sake, let's say that's 0.05. Um, so the concentration of that is determined. And then in order to work out what the water potential is of that cell is, we need to draw another graph, okay? So we need to plot another graph of concentration on the x-axis against water potential on the y-axis. Um, draw a line of best fit, extrapolate, and then use line of best fit to go up the concentration that we deduced to read off the water potential on the y-axis. So, for example, the graph um, will look like this, okay? And then there'll be water potential on this side here. Um, really badly done again. And then concentration there, okay? And then the graph will sort of look like that, okay? This is the graph that you draw. You draw this graph using the sort of um, a data, a, a table of data um, that you've already been given. And then you need to find 0 0.05 from that graph onto this one here. So we'll say 0 0.05 is about there. Um, and then you'd read up. Okay, and then you'd read the corresponding value on the axes, and that'd be there, okay? And that number there is the value of the water potential of the cytoplasm of the cell okay so we read off uh, that so um they could ask you to then explain why the water potential of that is that 
um, and that's because of, you know, ions and solutes and so on. Um, and they could also, they could perhaps sort of make you do this um, with two different species of plants, okay? They could say this species of plant, work out the water potential here and work out the water potential there. So one is, for example, you know, 10 and one is 20. You need to explain why one of them has a higher water potential than the other and why one is lower. And um, so the question says to, you know, suggest why the water potential of one of the cells is lower and that's because of the composition of the cytoplasm. So the answer you'd give is that in the cytoplasm, there are different um, sort of ions. There might be more protons or more solutes that would lower the water potential of one of those cells, okay? The cytoplasm of the cell. So what you can plot on your graph, so we can calculate, is the percentage change in mass or the ratio of final length to initial length, okay? So this would be percentage change in mass there. Alternatively, you could draw another graph where you have a ratio of the final length divided by the initial length okay so because this is a ratio um of final divided by initial obviously all your values will be in a ratio to one okay so it'll be whatever to one um so if this number for example is two that implies that the final mass the numerator is greater than the denominator okay therefore implying that the um the water moved into the cells by osmosis okay because the mass increased however let's say for example um the number you worked out instead was 0.5 um to one as the ratio that implies that the um denominator the i is actually greater than the numerator okay so that implies that f has decreased the final mass has decreased and it's decreased because water has been lost by osmosis okay so be able to interpret the meaning of these ratios in terms of final mass divided by the initial mass and therefore be able to plot a graph of that or interpret a graph if they decide to give you one so common questions for this topic are as follows. So why is percentage change in mass calculated? And the answer for that is that it allows comparisons to be more accurate because obviously it's a percentage. Um, therefore, differences in initial masses at the start can be accounted for, okay? So different cells might have different um, masses. Therefore, by using a percentage change, um, it accounts for that as we can just draw comparisons. Why do we need to use repeats? It's so that we can identify anomalies, consider whether to repeat them or ignore them. We can calculate a more accurate mean and allows for concordant results, okay? So that's a nice way of putting it. So concordant results to see um, what the difference in your values is, okay? If the difference is, you know, uh, 0.05, then you can sort of stop taking more repeats because you know what your mean that you will calculate will be more accurate. Why are the same species of plant tissues used, okay, and generally in experiments, unless you're comparing two? And that's because um, different plant species obviously have, you know, different alleles and different genetics and so on. So by using the same species, okay, the, clue, the word species here should get you thinking about, you know, genetic differences. So no genetic differences, okay, because they will have a similar original water potential because the alleles are similar, okay? So species, alleles, yeah, you've got to use the key term there. Why are the skins of potato, so just using potato as an example here, removed before sort of weighing or when you put them into the um, sucrose solution or whatever concentration you're using? And that's because the skin um, is impermeable to water, okay? So it will stop any water moving in or out, okay? Because it creates a barrier. The skin could also be a different tissue, okay? And if the skin is a different tissue, that means that, you know, there could be different alleles, therefore the cytoplasm of the cells of the skin have a different water potential. Why are cylinders, okay, so using the same example of potatoes, cut the same length when we put them in? Um, and that's to account for sort of differences in surface area. So by keeping them the same length, it means that they have a similar surface area, okay? So they will not affect the rate, okay? Not the water potential, they will not affect the rate of water uptake or loss by osmosis.